Hello and welcome back to Gapey's Garden. It's time for our May garden update. We've got all of our garden starts out of the grow room and most of them are acclimated to the outside sun and temperature. Except for the peppers, I'm still working on those. It's been an extremely cold and wet May for us this year. So everything in the garden is a little behind because our temperatures just are not cooperating. Let's go walk around the garden and I'll show you what I've got in the ground and what I still have left to plant. Since we're in the greenhouse now, why don't we start here? So most of the things that are in the greenhouse right now are figs. So all these figs overwintered in a insulated shed and I moved them into the greenhouse about um, a little over a month ago. So they're all leafed out. Having a greenhouse and figs really gives you a big advantage because it takes a pretty long growing season for most figs and the these are probably a month ahead of any fig tree that is not inside of a greenhouse. So we've got several of these figs that have some figs on them. So let me show you. So we got one here. So that is a pretty good size. Now I will do a, a separate video on all the figs, so I'm not going to go over them in too much detail, but this is the one that's probably the furthest along. This is the Nero 700M, so that should be ripening up here probably in the next month or so. But the only other things that we've got in the greenhouse are some overwintered greens, which of course are all bolting. So this one here is the Swiss chard, and I've been pulling quite a few of these out of the greenhouse and giving them to the chickens and also harvesting from our, for ourselves. Um, and here we got a mustard, so I've been also harvesting off that. We've got some, look how big these leaves are. They're just ginormous. This is a giant red mustard. And we've got some flower buds starting to appear here. So that is gonna be opening up here pretty soon. And then we've got some kale back here. It's not quite flowering yet, but it's probably getting pretty close. Um, and then we've got some spinach back here and that is gonna be going to the chickens here in the next few days. So I will be planting the peppers in here and a couple tomatoes. So I really need to get this stuff cleared out of here to make room for those things. And then we've also got some overwintered onions back in this corner. And I have harvested quite a few of those and I'll probably be harvesting these here in a bit. So this area I just actually cleared out today because I'm gonna be planting the eggplants in this spot here, maybe even this afternoon. And we've got some more spinach back here that will be going to the chickens. We have some volunteer cilantro here in the back also. And then we've got a dinosaur kale here that I've actually been harvesting off of and giving a little bit to the chickens as well. This isn't actually started flowering yet, but it looks like it is getting pretty close. And then we've also got some starts here in the greenhouse. And just two trays. We've got our leftover onions. So I just planted the onions last weekend and I'll be showing you those here in a minute. But we've got some giant leeks that I got from a local person, Tamara Reed. So that is, I haven't planted any of those. So I just repotted those up into a larger container um, and I'm gonna get those a little bit bigger before I decide where I'm gonna plant those. And then these are the leftover Patterson onions. So these are just kind of insurance in case any of the ones I planted end up not making it. So we've got those that we can replace them with. And then we've got some squashes here, delicata, and some cucumbers. We've got some butternuts back there. And then some zucchini. And then we've got a few late started tomatoes. So I'll probably, I don't know, I might either sell those or give those away at a, a local plant swap. Now over here in our in-ground bed, I have not planted anything yet this spring but we do have a few volunteers and perennials that are starting to come up. So I'm surprised that my dahlias are actually growing again. So we have two dahlias that we started from seed last year and both of them are coming up. We've also got some weeds popping up there that I need to take care of. That's the bindweed or morning glory uh, that we have a big problem here and is the worst weed ever. And then we've got right there a coneflower We've got a few volunteer potatoes going back there, and I think I might just leave those, um, let those grow, but I will be planting some corn in this bed 
in probably a few weeks and then as well as some more potatoes and then back there I think that's catmint that has volunteered from when we had a wildflower patch in here a few years ago um, so I just let this grow I do cut it back quite a bit because it does tend to get fairly large so it's looking really nice there now if you saw my last garden update that I did I think in April uh, I showed you where I planted some microgreen seeds that I had left over from a Johnny's packet that was really, really old. Well, it's still here and it's all actually flowering and bolting. So we've got a bunch of spinaches and, well, actually, I'm not sure if there's spinach, but I'm sure there's some mustards in here and I'm not sure what else, but it's a, some spicy greens mix that was on the packet. So I think it's mostly mustard probably. Um, but it is all bolting. So I have harvested quite a bit of it actually and it makes some really good salad. And we've also got some radishes here that have exploded. So you can see it's just going crazy here. And I think there's only maybe four or five plants that uh, overwintered. And actually if you've never had uh, radish seed pods, these are super, super tasty. They are kind of spicy, but they're really good. Mm. And we've also had a lot of bees coming in here. You can see there's a, a bee right there. And that's pretty much mostly what's in this bed. So I need to clear this out here pretty soon because I'm going to be planting some other stuff in here. We've also got some overwintered Swiss chard that is starting to bolt. And let's see what else. I also planted, I did plant some spring greens in here. So this is a lettuce that I just planted, I think last month. We've got a couple of those in there. And I thought I had a red one, there it is. So that's a radicchio that's pretty much buried by all this microgreens. And there might be another one in there buried somewhere, but yeah, I definitely need to clear this out because it's getting a little too tall. Here we have our garlic and onion bed. So this tall stuff here is the garlic and I've got about six or seven different varieties of garlic this year. I've got a mix of hard necks and soft necks. Now I did just plant this arugula here, which um, I started from seed inside. And as you can see, it's all, I mean, I just planted this a few days ago and it's all as soon as I planted it, it started bolting. So I don't think I'll be getting much of a harvest off that. I was kind of late putting it in the ground. And then we've also got some lettuce. So this lettuce is really, really cool. It's very, very dark. It's called Merlot. And this was actually a freebie that I got from Baker Creek with my last seed order. And I really like the color on that variety. And I'm sure it's full of good nutrients. And then I just planted this outrageous romaine. So it's a, my second round of lettuces. So I try to do some succession planting for lettuce so that I have some lettuce ready to harvest um, all throughout the season. We've got some more Merlot there. And then this one here is a red leaf variety. And then I also planted one called Coastal Star, which is a green romaine. So I've got four of those. And I like interplanting them in the garlic because they don't take up a whole lot of space and they seem to get along just fine. And now here are the onions that I just planted. So I started some of these from seed back in February. So this is the Rosa di Milano, a red variety. And then I also got some from Tamara and I got some blush and Patterson. So Patterson, I grew some from seed and then I got some more from her. So these are the ones, these smaller ones are the ones that I got from her and hopefully they'll all do well. So I think those are the only varieties that I've got growing this year. Now this bed is mostly full of overwintered greens back there and I've got some spring planted greens here, some spinaches which some of them are trying to bolt it looks like this one might be, um, but some of them still haven't bolted yet which is surprising. Uh, they're still kind of small. This one actually does, I think I did cut the top off that one that was starting to bolt, but it's getting some side flower buds now, so uh, that's probably not going to be very productive. And then I planted some radishes over here. These were actually grown in a different bed, and I was just thinning them out, 
and decided to plant some over here and they seem to be doing pretty good so if you have if you're ever thinning out your radishes to you know space them out more you can actually replant those that you pull out into another space and then we've also got some more radicchio here and i think this is a different two different radicchio varieties and this is a overwintered cilantro that is not looking like it's in too good of a shape so i'm gonna be pulling that here pretty soon so on the back side of this bed is the overwintered, another one of those giant mustards here. I mean, these, these leaves are massive. So, so big. And then we've got some more Swiss chard that is bolting. I think that's some lettuce back in here that is bolting as well. Lots of bolting stuff. More radicchio. This is the radicchio that overwintered and it is also bolting. So. The chickens are definitely feasting on these. We've also got some beets in here that's bolting, more Swiss chard, and I'm not sure what this is. It might, oh, I think this is a parsley. So the parsley is also going to flower. And you might remember in the last video, I think I mentioned there was a, a vole problem in this bed. So I was having a lot of problems with voles eating the, the radicchio here. And we ended up catching, I think, two or three of the voles. But I think there was, I don't know how many there were that were in here, but there was more than what we caught because we did notice a dead one laying out in the bed, I think it was a week or two ago. And we believe that it was killed by a weasel because it was there one minute and gone <laughs> the next minute. And we've been seeing a weasel around the garden now here in this bed we have our chives. So this one here is the garlic chives. It's got a more flat and wide leaf structure. And then over here is our regular chives. And these are more round. And as you can see, they're just starting to flower. So when the buds open up just a little bit more, I'm going to be making some chive vinegar. So I'll be soaking these in white wine vinegar for a couple weeks and it makes some delicious vinegar. And then the only really summer vegetable that I planted are these tomatillos. And this variety is called Queen of Malinalco, I think. And it is an interesting shaped tomatillo, kind of long and skinny, and it's a little bit yellowish. And then back here, I just recently planted some broccoli. So this is a Chinese broccoli, so it's kind of more like a broccolini. And it does look like we're starting to get some flowers here. And then we've also got some broccoli rob back here. And more spinach. And these volunteers you see coming up in this bed are actually buckwheat that I planted last year and it reseeded in this bed. We've got a couple more of those radicchios. This is the one variety red. And then this is another one that's kind of a speckled variety. And then we've got some more arugula back here. This one's doing a lot better, not bolting quite as quickly. I planted, this was actually from the same group of seeds that I planted with of the other one, but I planted these in the garden much earlier than the others, so it's taking a little bit longer for these to bolt. But they are beginning to, I don't know if you could see the flowers there. And then here's where we planted the, the radishes. So I've got two different varieties. We've got this early scarlet, which is a super fast growing one, but I'm having some problem with something eating them. So I think it might be slugs, but I'm not really positive. I've also got a icicle variety. So this is kind of a white variety and the slugs don't seem to be bothering this one quite as much. I do see some, it's harder to see because it's white, but there is some taken off of this one. I think that's the only one that's got damage so far. And then over here, we've got our carrots and I've got three different varieties of carrots. We've got Amarillo and I just recently thinned these out. So the spacing is a couple inches between each one. And then I've also got Chantenay over here and Danvers over here. So you haven't, if you haven't grown carrots before, they take kind of forever to grow. So these will be in the ground for several, several months. Here are our raspberries. This is an ever-bearing 
gold variety. I think in the last video it was just barely popping out of the ground and now we've got some pretty good size plants coming out. I'm not seeing any flowers yet. We'll probably see some flower buds starting to form in a maybe a few weeks. And then here is our monster rhubarb. So I'm gonna have to be pruning this back a little bit because it is starting to invade our blueberries over here. Now we did get some pretty cold early spring weather and I think this one here, this one is an ever evergreen variety of blueberry and if we get a really cold snap the flowers end up dying and it doesn't produce any berries. So I don't think this one's going to be very productive this year. I do see a little bit of flowers so maybe we'll get a few but a couple years ago we had a really bad winter and all of the flowers died and it didn't produce any fruit. Now all the other blueberries I think are all doing well and look like they're going to be pretty productive. Got some bigger ones back there. I've got 10 different varieties of blueberries in this bed and I think it's going to be a pretty good year for the most part. This one here is the pink lemonade. So this is probably the biggest bush that we have. So I'm always having to prune that back a little bit more because it gets a little too tall. So we do net our blueberries every year to keep the birds out because they would eat all of the blueberries if we didn't. And anything that goes above the height of this will need to be trimmed back because the netting will, will get caught in the, in the bush. And we get a lot of questions about the netting that we use on our blueberries. It's a bird safe netting. The way the material that it's made out of is kind of it's kind of plasticky and we have never had a bird get caught in it. We have tried other bird netting before we got that one and we used to get birds stuck in it all the time. But the one that we use is pretty awesome and highly recommended. It's a little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it. I'll put a link to the product in the description of this video. I have not been having very great luck with in-ground fig trees. This is our Desert King that did so well last year. It grew probably at least eight or nine feet tall. And I was looking forward to a lot of figs on it this year, but unfortunately it looks like it's died back pretty much to the ground. It has not started budding out at all. And I have pruned it down quite a bit. As you can see, it's, it's probably only four feet tall right now. And the branches look like they're pretty much completely dead. I'm gonna leave it in ground for a few more months just to see what happens it might start putting out some some new growth at the bottom there so we'll have to wait and see but I'm um, not getting my hopes up I may need to plant another one of these it's really surprising because Desert King is supposed to be the best fig variety to grow here and maybe I just planted it too early maybe I should have grown it in a pot for at least a year before planting it in ground I'm not really sure but I'm a little disappointed by that but I'm gonna give it another try now this fig is the Olympian, and this is one I just planted in ground this spring. Now I did grow it last year, so it is a year old. So hopefully it will do well this year. Now it is produce, starting to put out some leaves. I don't, I think I showed it in the last video, but it, it was full of figs when I planted it. Uh, but we had a couple of cold snaps that got down to about 30 degrees, and it killed all of the figs that were forming on it. So I don't think we're gonna get any brabas on that fig tree this year because it looks like they've all fallen off, but maybe we'll get some main crop figs off of it. We'll have to wait and see. Now I did plant some leeks around the perimeter of this bed and I've also got some purple mizuna and it does look like maybe a slug has found it because it looks like a lot of the leaves on this one are getting pretty chewed up. So I might have to put some slug bait down around this bed. Now the last fig tree that I have in ground is this laterula that I planted, I think it was two years ago. And last year, this one died all the way back to the ground. So just to be on the safe side this winter, I actually covered this with a blanket and then I put that cooler over the top of it. So it was a fairly short tree, so that cooler fit perfectly right over it. So it protected this one all year long, and I think it was well worth it, because I'm not sure it would have made it if I didn't do that. But it's looking really good. I don't see any figs forming on it, so I don't think we're gonna get a Braba crop on this one. 
And then I also planted a bunch of daffodils around in this bed. So that's all what these guys are. Now they just finished blooming, so they're pretty much done for this season. Now I do also have this here, which is a foxglove that I grew from seed last year. And it's a Obscura Sunset variety. So I have not seen the blooms on this yet, so hopefully we'll have our first blooms this year. But I've got four of these planted in this bed. One there, another one here. Looks like it's going to get ready to bloom here pretty soon. And then one back there. And this one here is the fourth one, but it is very, very small. So it looks like it died back to the ground and is just starting to grow back again. Here we have our asparagus, which is all most, I think, pretty close to being done. We do have a few spears that are just coming out, so this one's probably ready to harvest. If you don't grow asparagus, you might not know how fast these things grow. So if I don't pick this today, it's probably, if I wait till tomorrow, it might be too late because these grow super fast. And if you let them grow too long, then they'll get kind of woody and not very appetizing. So here's another one that looks like it's probably going to be ready to harvest tomorrow. And there might be one more back here that's ready to harvest. So I need to get, get on it and make sure I harvest these before it's too late. We also have some strawberries that are popping up in here. And these are just volunteers that have crept in here from back there, which is growing wild by the bees. Here's another one. Looks like we might get some nice strawberries on these. And then we've got our mint, which is kind of, I've got about six or seven different varieties in here, but I've been kind of lazy about managing these. So they're starting to all kind of intermingle and it's getting a little bit hard to tell them apart. Now some of them are kind of easy. This one back here, you can tell it has a much different leaf structure than this one here. This is the chocolate mint. And then this one is the regular mint. I've also got a variegated mint that is getting kind of shaded out by all this other mint, so I need to come in here and do a little work. This is our smallest bed. This is the herb bed, and we've got this monster back here is the lovage, and I cut this way, way back last year, and it's already becoming a giant again. This grows super tall and super fast. I actually don't use a whole lot of it, so I don't really want it to get really big, so I'm probably going to trim that back again this year. We've got a little bit of anise hyssop here that is starting to come up here. And then this is rue, another herb that I don't really use probably as much as I should. So I need to find some more uses for that because I don't really use it very much. And then this here is the golden oregano. It looks kind of green right now, but it is starting to get a little bit yellowish. So during the winter, it is just completely green, not yellow at all. But then as the, the sun is more prominent, then it starts turning more yellow. And by the middle of summer, this will be just really bright yellow. Now we have a variegated sage or had. So it looks like this may have completely died. I'm not really seeing, there does look like a little tiny bit of green growth. So I think I'm just gonna really cut this back and get rid of all this dead stuff and see if we can't get that to grow back. And then this is some overwintered thyme. So this is a, a German, I think it's a German thyme. It's supposed to be really cold hardy and it does look like both of these survived the winter. And I have grown various varieties of thyme before and they always died back in the winter and I'd have to replant it. But this one seems to be doing really good. Now I just threw this um, arugula here and it's starting to bolt but I just had a bunch of leftover arugula that I was just kind of planting in various places. And I also put a kale plant in here. So I just had an extra kale plant, so I just planted that in there. It's not an herb, but we just put that there. Back here is a red vein sorrel, which I got from a plant swap. And I think it was like two or three years ago. And it seems to be doing pretty well. I do have to try and keep it watered because it does tend to dry out pretty easily. And then we do have another variety of sage here. So this one is doing really well. It didn't really die back much at all this winter. So I do need to prune that back though because we are starting to get some flowers and we don't want it to flower too much because we want to be able to harvest some of this sage. 
The last bed I wanted to show you is our newest bed. This was a patch of grass that was along the side of the chicken run here, but we decided to get rid of the grass and we put in a layer of compost as well as decomposed wood chips. And that's pretty much all that is filling this bed. We also put some cardboard on the bottom, but all I have planted in here right now is some volunteer chamomile. So this chamomile was actually volunteering here in the wood chips and I just dug it out and planted it in there and it seems to be doing really well. And I also planted a bunch of my sweet alyssums that I started from seed. So we've got a few different colored varieties from the mixed seed pack that I got. So we got that one. We've got this white one, which is probably the most common colored alyssum. And we've just got different shades of pinks and purples. Really pretty. And they smell really good too. So we probably got a dozen or so of those. So I'm hoping they reseed themselves every year and we have a nice patch of those. If you saw my last video, I showed the installation of this new Giraffe Tools retractable hose that they sent us and we've been really enjoying it. It's come in really handy to water the garden starts, which I will show you now. So these are all the garden starts that I have yet to plant in the the ground, we've got our eggplants here, some sesame, some basil back there, lettuces, and then all these are flowers. We've got straw flowers. These are called status, a flower I haven't grown before. Cosmos, these are the potatoes that we started from seed. And we've got veronicas, calabrocha, pincushions, our kale, which is gonna be planted next to our tomatoes whenever we are able to plant those. And then we've got some pretty violas. This is the antique laeta, and this is the tiger laeta. And then we have a bunch of different varieties of columbines. And we've got more flowers. And these are nasturtiums. We've got zinnias, sunflowers, petunias, marigolds. And then I had somebody give me some hollyhocks that she started from seed. So I'm gonna be planting those in the front yard. We've got our melons, which I don't think this year is gonna be a very good year for planting melons because it's so cold. And those are for a friend that's coming to pick those up soon. We've got our tomatoes. So that is all the tomatoes I'm growing in the garden this year. I think there's 18 in there. And then we've got our peppers here. So I'm already sold out of all of my peppers and tomatoes. Those were the first to sell out. And then all the starts that are on the shelf here are all ones that I still have available for sale. So I just love these violas. Aren't they just beautiful? And then these are all of our squashes here. Some celery. Oh, actually I didn't show you the celery. So I did plant some celery in the garden in one of the beds. I'll have to go back and show you those. And then we've got our kale, lettuce, and our broccoli. So here we go. Here's the, the bed that the celery is in. It was hiding behind the broccoli that we had back here. So I've got two of these tango varieties, and then I've got a pink celery as well. That's it for the May garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. And when I do the June garden tour, hopefully I'll have everything planted in the garden. I still have a lot of work to do, a lot of bed cleaning out to do and a lot of plants to get in the ground. So hopefully the weather warms up and we can get that done. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.